Hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. Welcome. It's time for another craft hour. It's season two. You know, we love to start the show with making sure that you can hear and see me all right as we start with you, our Pink Fresh Studio audience. So in the comments, make sure that you take a moment to make sure I'm coming across loud and clear. Welcome to season two. This is called Take Two. It's a afternoon of redemption. So grab your brunch things you need from a mimosa uh, to your cup of coffee and let's do this new season. So welcome. We see a lot of people in the comments. I see that Lori's here. Welcome, Lori. We're glad that you're here. I saw that Debbie is here as well. We're so glad to have all of you. And of course, Sylvie, one of our biggest fans. Hi, Sylvie. You're so dedicated to the show. Thanks so much for being, for being here. Debbie, you too. Hi, Barbara. So glad that you're here as well. Francis, always supportive of us. Thank you for joining us live. That's great. Anita says that I'm coming through great, which is good. And Debbie says she can too. All right, so many new names. Welcome to Craft Hour with Pink Fresh Studio. I'm your host, Jeff Lindbergh from Orlando, Florida. I'm a huge Pink Fresh Studio fan. And every Saturday, I have the opportunity to tune in with some of Pink Fresh's best designers and leaders. And we get to play with Pink Fresh products. And you get to come along the journey with us. Every other week, we'll take a moment to introduce you to a designer that you probably have seen on Instagram, our blog, and other channels, and you get to meet them in person. So I'm so glad that you're able to be here. Oh, my friend Sandy Boone is here. Hi, Sandy. Hasina, welcome. So many new faces. Please, if we haven't connected on Instagram, be sure to connect with me so that we can get to know each other. I promise I connect with all of you. And of course, Carissa is here. Carissa, so glad to have you join us. This is a great turnout. That's awesome. Well, I certainly can't do this show alone, so I'd like to make sure that I bring in my partner in crime, one of the best bosses in town. She helps me make sure everything goes smoothly here at the Craft Hour with Pink Fresh Studio, and she's here for a little redemption. So without any further ado, let's get my friend and one of the best designers on the company's uh, site, Miss Leah Lawson, to join us. Hi, Leah. Welcome to the show. Hi, Jeff. Hi, crafty friends. Thanks for <laughs> it is a welcome. day of redemption for Miss Leah it Lawson, is. right? This show is all about redemption. I had yeah. to be on it two times in a row to make up for that hot mess of a last show. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give ourselves a little bit of credit. If we were pilots on a plane, <laughs> you and I in co pilot position, I think we at least got us to the destination, although there was a lot of turbulence, that's for sure. Yeah. And hey, you know what? We were committed. We were going down with that plane, no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> and and we definitely landed the plane, though. For all of you that we watched <laughs> on replay, thanks so much for sticking with us. Leah, walk us through what you were feeling the last time uh, you were doing the show. What was going on in your head? I know because we have had a lot of production meetings since then. But tell um, our Pink Fresh Studio audience what it was like on your end. Let's just expose what it was like. Let's be honest about it. Yeah, absolutely. We are all about honesty and transparency <laughs> at Pink Fresh. And I was panicked. Um, I was about ready to message you and just be like, let's just stop. Let's just quit. Let's let's not do this anymore. I, I, was yeah. like, I didn't half the time. I didn't know what to say because I couldn't hear you. It sure. was terrible. Sure. So uh, so Leah and I knew that we had our new season coming up and we were going to change the date. First of all, thank you all for joining us today. We can already see that there's a brand new audience base. This probably is going to be a great time for a lot of people. Pink Fresh prides itself so. on being an international brand. So it makes sense that so many of our international friends have an opportunity to join us, which is great. We can see a lot of them in the comments already. So thanks for joining. Miss Leah, can we talk about what did we do last week? We took a, a brand new release and we shook it up. Uh, do you happen to have your, if you don't, I have mine. I'll show off the one that uh, I do. I did. Uh, tell us, tell them a little bit about what they missed. And uh, because this is one of my favorite things that came out of the new design. I don't Look know at if, that. if you can see them. So we did, I, um, I finished an, a second shaker card this week to go with the one we created um, on um, the show the last time. And they're yeah. just really cute and fun and really um, awesome to attach to like a gift package or a gift bag. Sure, sure. Hey, look, royalties in the house. Do you see Laura Basson is here? I'm telling you this Ooh. time... Daniel, all of our German friends, Sylvia, Daniel, uh, Laura Basson, everybody is here. The German contingent has arrived. 
this time works well for Germany. I'm convinced. And we're really, really excited about that. We know that we have a lot of, of crafty friends that are international. Um, and of course, our, our lovely Laura Basson as well. So um, we're happy to change the time to be able to make this show more accessible for everyone. Yeah, I can see it's paying off already, at least in, at least in Germany. That's awesome. So Miss <laughs> Leah, uh, tell us a little bit about the new release. It's going well. And then let's talk about connecting and creating and what Pink Fresh loves to do with the Pink Fresh Studio audience and how today's project we're going to do kind of fits into both of those items. Sure. Um, so the new the new release is going well. We released a um, good selection of new stamps and dies. Um, you can see that all at our website. If you click on that very first banner, it will take you to all of the new products. A lot of them are sold out right now, um, but never fear, they're on reorder. So just make sure if there's something that we use that you really, really want and it happens to not be in stock, just go to the product link and sign up for a restock notification. And the minute we put it back in our store, you, we'll send you an email so that you can you can snag it. That's great. Um, so today I am we're gonna make a card together that um, marries two challenges that we have here at Pink Fresh Studio. Um, the first one is we have a monthly challenge that we run every month, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and we have it, it's right on our website. We have a monthly challenge blog. Um, and typically what you get with our monthly challenges is a theme of some sort and a okay. color palette. And for me, um, I and love that y'all introduce a color palette. You know that I've talked often about color matching. And I think what you're doing is whispering to us as makers to say, hey, look, we are, know that these colors are tried and true. They'll work and you can have sort of a perfect outcome with them. That's awesome. Absolutely. And I always try within the monthly challenge post to um, let you know what ink colors match best with the colors that we chose, what collections we pulled them from, um, just to give you an idea of where to grab things. But of course, as always, you can use any of your Pink Fresh products, even if they're not the ones I mentioned in the challenge sure. post. So, sure. so we've got our monthly challenge there, but then we also... Um, run a bi-weekly sketch challenge in our Facebook friends group. Okay. So not on our Facebook page, but in our friends group that you have to join. Um, and we have a card sketch and a scrapbooking sketch every other Wednesday. Well, that's so much fun. Well, I know that there are fun ways for us to participate. And that's the best part about Pink Fresh is that it definitely connects to you, the person who consumes and enjoys the product. And I love that there's a way to show off your fantastic work and for you to say, share all the good things that you're making as well. So that's awesome. All right, my friend. Well, what we'll do is if you uh, would like, we'll move to your desktop. So we'll take you off okay. camera. I'll talk to the audience for just a few minutes and then we will get back to it. So I'm going to mute you and I'll tell you when you're back on. All right. Okay, thanks. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Again, welcome to The Craft Hour with Pink Fresh Studio. I'm your host, Jeff Lindbergh out of Orlando, Florida. Every other Saturday now around 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, my time, whatever the hour is here, I eight, eight after the hour for you, uh, is where we'll be found. I look forward to connecting with each of you. Find a time to watch the replay, connect with us via comments. I promise that uh, Pink Fresh Studio and the team gets every comment to me and we connect and have fun. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that maybe my my girlfriend, my best friend, my mentor, and Daniel's auntie, um, Miss Laura Basson, will join me one of these evenings for her time. Uh, it's evening in Germany, so it makes sense. So uh, Barbara, I'm so glad that you're here as well. So here's how it works, everybody. You know that we're going to be making and we're also going to be conversing. The best thing about Craft Hour and the reason that we do this show is that we want to have a moment to converse, connect with you, our Pink Fresh Studio audience, and make at the same time. So to stimulate that conversation, we are going to, hi, Amanda Panda, I'm glad you're here. Uh, we are going to be asking our five questions. So throughout the show, we're going to be asking questions about two. That's right, because remember, this is all about season two. Our episode today is called Take Two. So each of our questions will be themed around two. All right, my friend, it looks like uh, our friend uh, Leah is ready to go to her desktop. So let me show that off to you. There's my desktop, but let's move over to Leah's. Leah's, what do we have brewing today? Okay. First, I just want to ask you, does it look okay, Jeff? Yes, I think um, you look great. Okay, perfect. Thanks. I just wanted to make sure that it, I didn't have things like off screen or anything like that. 
Um, so today we are going to stamp um, a rainbow with the pop out rainbow cling stamp. Um, but we're not going to do it in a traditional color. We're just going to pick some pinks and some oranges to create the rainbow. At least I am. You are absolutely free to use whatever colors that you want to. Um, so if you are not familiar with our pop out stamps, what they are is they are red rubber. So you're going to get that really great impression every time. Um, but every single piece is separate from the other so that it makes multicolor stamping and multimedia stamping really simple and easy. Now, our stamps come with the frame, which I love having most of the time. But what I've actually found with the rainbow is I prefer to use it without the frame. And today we're actually only going to use a few pieces. We're not even going to stamp the whole rainbow. So you'll just be able to pull the piece out, arrange it. And as we go, you'll get to see how, how easy it is to do it. So because these are red rubber, you want to make sure you don't leave your foam pad in. So I've already taken it out of my Misty. And you just want to um, um, have your Misty empty. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a piece of white cardstock. And this is just cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half for now. And we'll die cut it down a little bit further later on. So I'm going to start by taking out this, the, the, the largest rainbow stripe, rainbow ring, rainbow, well, yeah, whatever, you, rainbow you stripe. A, That's, you have the we'll new Misty that. too. What would you call that, Jeff? You have the new Misty. I'm so impressed. It's very oh, fancy. Oh, thanks. I do. It's awesome. I love the added features on the new Misty. So what were you saying? What would I call what? Are, would you call this art like a rainbow, like a, a stripe? Arch, a, a rainbow arch. An arch. There we go. Perfect. I so knew you would have the right word. So we're taking out the arch, okay. okay? Taking out one of the arches, and I am actually doing it the opposite way of um, the way that it stamped if you used the frame, because I wanted it to come off the other side okay. of the paper. And then you just want to grab it up with your Misty. And I am going to go ahead and start inking this layer up in Ballet Slipper, which is our lightest pink. Are you doing the same colors as me today, or yes. are you are you going I, on your own? I was not brave. I'm 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 trying to convince uh, Laura to do a, a new Instagram channel called uh, Laura Laura's Colorways, where uh -huh. she does nothing but take her favorite stamps and introduce color blends for us to all pick like like you see on Pinterest. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's got Laura such an would eye be for color. Awesome at that. Laura would be really great at that. Give, give us the friendly reminder about working with um, the inks for uh, Pink Fresh and how you may see splotching, but in reality, it's not. Yep. So um, our inks are, are premium dye inks. And what they are trying to do is um, basically they're trying to dye your paper. So if you see a little bit of splotchiness at first, it will actually smooth out and become this nice, just um, creamy looking stamped finish. Um, I did stamp my ballet slipper twice just because um, it's a very, very light pink. And I wanted to make sure that it, I just wanted it to have a little bit deeper of a tone. Um, the rest of these colors, I probably won't need to stamp twice unless I need to um, re, you know, refill my ink pads. They, I, I use them a lot. So you know, they're getting to that point, but it always seems like I go, I grab them and then I for I forget to grab the reinker. So can I you do that. all imagine, uh, we use our pink fresh studio products a lot, but can you imagine Leah and Heather and how, how <laughs> loved their products are? You, you definitely would win and the amount of stamping time. So we're doing two on this arch. Are we, um, have you moved and I just didn't see it? Or are you on I'm your I'm sorry, second? I did move along to the next arch. I apologize okay. that I Got didn't it. even tell you. So I just took the next arch um, that's right below that first one. And okay. I just um, adhere, I, you know, adhered them together. I butted it up against that first stamped arch and then took it off. And I'm inking it up in apricot. Okay. This time around. The other thing that you'll notice about pre about dye inks 
sometimes when you initially stamp them, they are super bright and they might feel like they don't match the color that you stamped, but as they dry and as they start soaking into that cardstock and essentially dyeing it, they soften to the true tone of the, um, of the color. Yeah, I think what happened to me and my first making and understanding, I was late to stamping. I uh, was creating cards mostly from assembling of die cuts, which is why I'm super excited about today's project. Um, but I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. And then you're right. If you just give it a minute and let dyes do what dyes need to do, you will yep. find that the um, ink does the magic. So, Absolutely. Okay, Jeff, I'm moving on to the third arch. Okay. And I'm doing the same exact technique. I am taking that next arch. I am butting it up against and matching it in place with um, the one that we just stamped. And then I'm going to remove it from my Misty and ink it up with the next color, which this time I'm going to use Coral Reef. Now, I know my Coral Reef ink pad is getting low and I need to give it a little refresher, but I might be able to get away with stamping this only once. We'll see. So to give everyone a little insider scoop to Behind the Magic here at the Craft Hour, all of my guest designers that join me on the show are actually not seeing... Uh, the feed that you see. So remember our friend Leah or any of the designers that you've seen are strictly relying on seeing my face looking down at a project. Um, so it's always been very interesting for them. And that's why you sometimes hear my guest designer ask me, um, how are you doing or what are you up to? Um, because they really <laughs> can only rely on looking at my big crown head looking down away from them. So um, <laughs> there's a little bit of magic for you all backstage all right right so that third color is there those trios are looking fantastic together which is awesome thanks i think they are too i have I'm, i actually do have um youtube up over on my laptop it's just a little delayed but i'm loving I'm, yours is looking awesome too that's great all right so okay we're, we're gonna do another arch i'm gonna yep we're gonna do two more arches are you cool okay. with that yep yep okay so we're gonna throw that next one in do it the same exact way that we have didn't have done it previously. So one of the things and, about, um, go ahead, my friend, you need to educate. Oh, us. I was Keep just going to say this time we're going to ink it up with Clementine. Great. Um, okay. So um, as you all know, one of the reasons why um, I tried to get a little bit more exposure out on Instagram and talk to everybody was that I felt like everybody was trying to be Instagram perfect ready with zero questions about crafting. So um, I don't. I decided to say, hey, I don't know a lot. So Leah, my next don't know a lot question about products are with mm -hmm. um, cling backgrounds like this classic old school rubber. Um, why is it such an easier thing? Why doesn't photopolymer offer us the same thing? Is it the, the cushion? Um, what is making a stamp more definitive for us with uh, rubber? You know, um, it's just that... Um... That's a, it's kind of a little bit of a harder one for me to explain, but I'll try to. Okay. It's um, in part the material. Um, okay. And I think both have absolutely have their place. Um, what we just found with background and photopolymer is when you have a real solid image with photopolymer, you really have to prep it and um, make sure that it is basically ready to take the ink. Whereas, um, which you absolutely can do with a clear background stamp, but we just wanted to take, um, we wanted to make backgrounds easy and, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, well, I think that for sure, um, pho photopolymer clear definitely has its place. My goodness. Oh, yeah. We definitely need to see, uh, where we're landing projects, where they're falling, Etc. So, I mean, photopolymer is definitely an essential. I just love uh, the opportunities we get to use the classic rubber stamps as well. And I'm yeah. sure that the make of rubber, its uh, cushion of what it can do for impression is something that has helped a lot. Uh, while you move on to the next arch, I will catch up to you after the Clementine, but I'm going to throw our first question up on the wall. Um, everybody, you'll remember that the reason that we wanted to participate is we wanted to have some fun too. So today's question around the two theme is, 
Speaking of twos, what's your favorite color combos? Which one do you use the most? Um, I will go first here. I have always enjoyed um, a little bit of red and blue. You see red and blue in a lot of uh, the stuff that I do. And right now I'm having a little love affair with black and white. As you know, we did an episode uh, with Heather Hoffman. That was one of my favorites as well. But I would have to still say red and blue. How about you, Miss Leah? Were you able to think of uh, your favorite uh, color combo? Which ones do you lean on the most? And so typically it, I go with gray, white, and a little bit of aqua. Okay. Um, in crafting, I really love, right now especially, I've been loving a combination of teals, oranges, and pinky reds. Oh, nice. Okay. Let's put some of um, everyone's comments up on the board real quick, and then I need to get back to work to catch up. Uh, so uh, teal and coral, browns and red tones from uh, greens, says Jenny. She loves a diversity of greens. Rita Norfauer, um, my goodness. No sound for Leah. Okay, we'll fix that. I bet that's on that one shot. Leah has been heard around the world, I promise. Loving gray and pink lately, my favorite color combos. Let me go back to that. Um, let me go back to that one, make sure she's unmuted. We're just going to fly through the different scenes really quick, everybody, to make sure that we don't have a mute. We have a mute on that one. Got it. So fix that. All right. Thanks, everybody, for letting me cut through these camera shots really quick. I just want to make sure. Thanks for letting here. us know, friends. Yep. That's awesome. That's super helpful. All right. You're back uh, and definitely okay. live. What's my last color that I'm doing here, Miss Leah? So your last color is passion fruit, Jeff. Okay. All right. So I am working on my last arch as we speak, loading up the Alrighty. passion fruit. I'm going to just clean up my stamp here and put it away. This one was an easy cleanup because I didn't have to really pull much of it apart. So I did want to say some, I did want to mention something that um, probably one of our past lives with Heather, one of our viewers actually had a really good idea for our pop out stamps um, where, especially the ones that are a little bit harder to know exactly where all of the pieces go. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take like a white Sharpie and number the pieces so that I know what goes where. Now you don't probably, you don't really need to do it with the rainbow one per se, but like some of the striped ones and the sunburst one, I think that it would be really beneficial to have them numbered just so you know where to place them back. That is a really in good In the idea. frame. Okay, got it. Yeah, so I just wanted to give that little tip here while I am cleaning my stamp up. And as you all can see, that dye is definitely doing its work. If you think about the ballet slipper, we're getting a fuller color as we speak and as the saturation and the dye starts to uh, do the coloration that it's supposed to, which is awesome. Cheryl, yeah. I love your answer. That's awesome. Lori, shades of pinks and purples. Awesome. Well, you're definitely Lots a pink fresh member. Lots of beautiful color choices sure. that people um, are loving. Okay, I am going to go ahead and die cut my panel, Jeff. Okay. Um, I'm going to use one of our stitched rectangles. And my friends, I'm going to be using one of our standalone cut. This is actually, um, it says stitched rectangle, so maybe um, I do have stitched. I'm so silly. Yay! I, I told uh, Miss Leah that I didn't have it in the uh, show notes today, so there we go. That's okay. All right, so I'm pulling out the stitch you said, and what is our yep. alignment that you want me to think about? I'm sorry, what was that? I missed it. That's okay. I just want to see that alignment a little bit better, so I'm going to bring your desktop up. Okay. Uh, so you are doing with enough. Okay. Great. Great. Yep. Great. I'm kind of I'm kind of aligning as far to the right as I can in order to not cut off very much of the rainbow. And so one tip that I have when I die cut things like this, I actually tape them down to the actual cutting plate. I just feel like that minimizes the chance that it will um, move or shift on you as it rolls through your machine. And I'm going to get a little loud here, friends. So bear with me. I'm just going to run this through my Gemini real quick. All right. I'll mute you. Oh, no. Her Gemini is so fast. Why do we even have to mute her? She's just so quick. 
Okay, so, um, Miss Leah, I know it might be hard, but uh, this is the biggest um, stitch rectangle I have. So I'm going to show you in your camera. Okay. Um, is that a good placement, or do I need to leave a lot of white space? Show me where I'm. Um, I think that that is perfect. Okay, so just give myself yeah. some white space on the bottom. Yeah, give yourself some white space on the bottom. Yep. Okay. All right. Oh, gonna... it looks like I had a question. Someone's asking me, are you just using water to clean your stamps? And I certainly am only using water and with a microfiber cloth. That's great. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to let you take over for just a second and I'm going to cut as well. So here's your okay. die cut. Fantastic. Okay. So I just die cut my panel. So it's now got that beautiful stitched edge around it. And as you can see, um, the rainbow at the end is it's not perfectly straight, but that's okay because we are going to cover this with some really pretty floral options. So we are going to use um, the ephemera pack from the Celebrate Collaboration collection that we did with our friends over at Altenew. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I pulled out just some of the really beautiful floral pieces that you find in the ephemera pack. And we're going to use those to embellish the bottom of that rainbow. So, um, and you really can do this however you want. I'll grab some foam dots um, after the I arrange them and it kind of looks how I want it to look. But I think that it's really pretty rather than, you know, having like a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, we are adding some beautiful flowers at the end of the rainbow in their place. It's very pink fresh. It feels very pink fresh too. And your rainbow with some flowers, especially beautiful watercolor florals like this. Oop, and I just realized I think I was kind of in the far corner of my screen. I apologize for that, guys. So tell me about- I am um, just checking our, out some comments here. Oh, yes, sorry. Is our end result going to be, is this popping up um, so I can, can I bleed over on the side because I'm eventually going to be popping this panel? Yeah, yes, you can bleed over onto the side a little bit okay. um, because we're going to put it onto a card base. So okay. you'll have a little bit of, you'll have about an um, eighth of an inch on each side extra to um, pop it over with. Um, you also don't have to, Jeff. Like if you want to make sure that it will stay nice and contained in your envelope, just go ahead and be sure to cluster those florals um, in further. Okay. So there's this beautiful wreath cut that is in the ephemera pack and you all are maybe going to have a little bit of a heart attack here, but I'm actually going to cut it and we are going to just take some of the floral pieces that are in it to use um, on our little floral cluster here. Well, I am anyway, Jeff, you by no means have to oh, we're do this watch part we're if watching. you don't we're want to, but I'm doing it. We're living on the edge with you. We're, we're going to watch okay. you and then I will make my decision. I'm going to actually move us over to question number two really quick here on take two. So okay. take two, what's the best two cents? What's the best advice you've ever received? Is it easy to say? It probably isn't. But give give us a little summary in the comments. The best advice that uh, you've been given. Um, you know, Leah, I'm going to let you go first. Tell me about... Um, okay about the best advice. I will tell you, I did have to tell my friend Leah this one ahead of time. That, that would be super mean to make, Laura, don't be scared off. I, I, I make sure you get a little heads up on these questions. <laughs> oh, poor Laura. I'll answer that question in a second, but poor Laura, we were chatting the other day um, or just messaging. And I was like, we definitely, I was like, we're moving the time and we would really love to have you as a guest. And she's like, I am terrified after what happened last weekend. Oh. And I'm like, it was my phone. It was not the show. It was my phone. You don't need to be terrified. <laughs> I love that she, I love that she was, uh, she was worried about it. That was great. Yeah. So um, I, I think the best um, advice I have ever been given is um, to try your very best not to go to bed angry 
It doesn't necessarily mean you have reached reached resolution, um, but um, n not going to bed angry is it. You know, it's going to make you not sleep well, and so I feel like that's some of the best advice I've ever been given. Got it. These are actually really good. I know I should be cutting, but there's a lot of good um, reactions. Uh, let me um, put some of them up on the screen. Just to not hurry, but breathe through things. Uh, Amanda Panda says, don't be afraid of failure. Barbara Hill says, trust your own judgment. Oh, intuition is so grace. Use a powder yeah, these... bag before embossing. Francis, you're right. Um, be fearless, <laughs> says Ditto. And Lindar, I love what you said, Lindar. You don't need it all, which is true. So I'll share mine really quick. My uh, one is that it all comes out on wash day. And, you know, I think we've all had that um, moment where we just wonder why isn't, why is that person um, not um, having to kind of pay a tax on the decision they made? Or I can't believe that person got away with that. And I just yeah. think at the end of the day, it all comes out on wash day. You know what I mean? That's, it may take yeah, a little a bit one. of time, but everything heals. And the other one, and it's sort of the same. So I struggled with um, doing, having one answer. But the other one is, is that today will look very different from tomorrow. And then 14 days, two weeks from now, will look very different from what you're carrying today. Time and movement through kind of the weeks will only eventually make things feel better. So that's what I would say are mine. Oh, Sylvie, I like Sylvie's. Her says, surround yourself with the right people who have your back. That's yeah. very true. Speaking of, uh, you have a house guest right now. I hope he has your back. Uh, tell us what you've been up to this weekend. Yeah, my brother made a um, not surprise appearance. He called us a few days prior, but he is here visiting. Um, and we, uh, we, he, we, him and his girlfriend came with us to their um, or to our our fancy birthday dinner for Josh last night. And after the show, we're just going to hang out a little bit before they head on their way. Yeah, everybody, it's uh, uh, hubby Josh's birthday week he was a birthday boy the day before yesterday so yeah all right bring that camera uh bring your uh ephemera up to the camera and just tell me what you're working on there what what is our end result we're just basically oh. cutting um our favorites are we ever going to make a c shape or um or are we just picking our nope. favorite pieces we are just picking our favorite pieces just pick your favorite florals out of there that you think um would look good I kind okay. of cut this one and I think I'm not loving it anymore. So I'm going to pull it out, but I'm just kind of cutting different pieces just to see what I think will look best in here. And I actually kind of wonder here if this little piece that is kind of a C shape would actually look good popped up like that. And then this one pop, that might just be a little much. Yeah. It's what I love about these ephemera packs. You, you have the time to really like place things and figure out if you like how they're looking before you um, glue them down. So um, what are you, are you how, how are you doing over there, Jeff? Good. I um, am, am playing with different uh, uh, layout options as we speak. Are we okay to commit to some if we know, or uh, do we need to you hold yeah, off? Yeah, please do. I am, here's the way, here is where it takes me a little bit to commit. I will fuss around with things for probably too long. Got it. But yes, please glue some down if you like where um, you've placed it, please, by all means. And you are good with uh, some dimension that won't affect our outcome either? Nope. Go ahead. I'm going to be adding some dimension to mine too. I just got to find my foam dots. Here we go. Because as we all know, say it with Dimension me, is life. Dimension is life. <laughs> That's the best advice. There you go. That is the best <laughs> advice that we've been given from Laura Fedora. Because we all attend the school of Laura Bassett. Yep. <laughs> Carissa's here okay. too. Hi, Carissa Wiley. Oh, uh, let me uh, let me um, give a little bit of news about that. So we had a little change in our video team, and uh, we needed to add a new member. And Carissa is now on our video team. We haven't made an announcement yet, but we're really excited oh. about that. I've got to put my face on the screen for that. That's awesome. Krissa, <laughs> we all adore you. That You are a perfect match for our friends at Pink Fresh. That is awesome. What a good, what a good. Look at, you get yeah. the scoop. You get the scoop when you're here at the craft hour. 
paid for our <laughs> studio audience, you get the scoop, which is awesome. So I brought up um, Leah's screen just a little bit so that you could see that she is definitely adding some shadows there. Uh, she has her um, her foam uh, dots and uh, the dimension and shadow, of course, really helps with that rainbow. What a fun idea. Thanks. So um, you'll I used just some Connect Glue to um, put down the first layer of florals, but I didn't go edge to edge. And so what I'm going to do before I start adding any more on top, and this is another Laura Basson term, I'm going to zhuzh these, yep. which means I'm kind of giving the petals and the leaves just a little bit of zhuzhing so that they have a little bit of dimension to them. Yeah, it, it brings them to life a little bit more. The character comes to life in the story, if you will. With uh, It with, does. And it gives it that little bit of a natural shadow when you photograph them. This one I'm definitely going to pop up with a foam dot or a couple. Oh, so Carissa says she's coming back, which is awesome. Yeah, it's yes. Carissa was on our creative team a couple of years ago, maybe. Um, I think it was in, shoot, it was either 2018 or 20, or early 2019. I'm, I'm blanking a little bit, but um, yeah, she's coming back. And this time she's on our video team. The people have spoken. They, want, they well, wanted their Carissa back and Leah said yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which is great. We are happy to have her back. She is, she creates beautiful cards and she does really great informative videos so we're very excited yes what i also love and what i think y'all can expect um heather is also very good at this and you are too miss leah but you're on thank you you're on the channel right now um is that carissa likes to show you options and she helps you not worry if you, if, if you think if you see her do something and you think oh my gosh that's a mistake she never ever um denies the mistake and it's never a mistake it just is her way of saying you've got to work beyond that and i just love that she keeps trucking along with the idea that she's committed to and if she doesn't i agree she works with it yep she does that and that's great because let's be real all of us sometimes run into things that don't go exactly as planned when you're creating something so um owning it and figuring out you know having a tim gun moment you know make it work moment mm -hmm. um is you know, it's part, I think it's part of crafting. It's part of life. So, And sometimes the outcome is even better. Everybody exactly. is having so much fun uh, looking uh, up how to spell the word zhuzh. It is actually available <laughs> on Google for you to get the correct spelling. It's not what you think it is. I can't think of it at the moment live on the air. Um, but it's really uh, gotten into the lexicon thanks to um, uh, what really is... Um, uh, RuPaul uh, Strag Race has definitely brought it back into mainstream, but um, it was also originated from Queer Eye for the Straight Guy back in the day, where we rearrange furniture to zhuzh it up and give it a little bit more life. So, oh, I see. I, I learned something new today, Jeff. I had no idea about that. That's awesome. That's yeah. good to know. I love that. I didn't yeah. realize it was actually like a word word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, ball, <laughs> ballroom culture brought that to us. Um, That's awesome. A lot of. Okay, I think. I think I like my floral cluster. How, how are you feeling over there? I'm feeling good too. I'm just now playing with my, okay. drop, my drop shadows, but we can move on. Let's, we can move on as well. Cool. So oh, here's I have mine, to see everybody. this. My Google speech prompt only comes up with juice. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great comment. Heidi, Heidi, you got to get back to it, my friend. It's in there, I promise. <laughs> All right, I'm good with mine as well. What's next up on our adventure? Okay, so I, uh-oh, well, I have a sentiment somewhere that I pre-die cut. It's just a little lost, so give me a minute, Jeff. <laughs> and I am not as prepared on the sentiment as I want to. Tell me, Okay. tell me, is it going to nest? Where Where do you envision it going? Okay, so I am doing, I, I just have this cute um, little hello word die cut that has the shadow. This is from the Phrase Builder hello die set. Um, and I was thinking of either just putting it over top of the floral cluster. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Or up in the rainbow if, um, if we don't want to cover up that floral cluster. Ooh, or maybe just kind of tucked. Ooh, 
maybe just kind of like this, just okay. tucked in at the very top of the floral cluster. I don't yeah. know. Can you see me, what my screen is doing? Yeah, absolutely. Or what I, okay, cool. Maybe something like that. Cute. Yeah, because it doesn't thoughts? take away from what the clusters were doing as well. And then here's mine, everybody. And so uh, this is a fun color combo. It's it's um, bold and it's definitely a different idea, which is good. Um, Thank you. I'm glad see. you like it. Let me get question number three going. Okay. Because we are at 20 till the hour already. Time flies. Oh, wow. Fun. That went fast, didn't it? All right. So what is your favorite food pairing? Two things that go together perfectly for you. Sadly, I don't know if I know mine, but I feel like I know all of Laura Basson's. So I'm going to tell you right now that Laura Basson is going to say French fries and a cold Coca-Cola. Oh, I might have to honestly agree with Laura Basson, but mine would be French fries and a ice cold Dr. Pepper. Ooh, I do love a good yeah. Dr. Pepper. Yep. Good. I don't drink soda anymore, but. Um... Yeah, tell us really quick as I um, look for my, um, I'm going to get a sentiment going, so I'm going to put you on the screen. Uh, tell okay. us a little bit about your um, food journey that you were proud to share with us as uh, your Pink Fresh audience. Yeah, so um, after three months of a pretty terrible quarantine diet, and then three weeks in Montana with, with family, just eating lots of really good food, but just just a lot of food, uh, my husband and I came home, and we um, were committed to doing Whole30, and we've actually done two rounds of it since then, and it has just been great. We feel better. We look better. Um we cut a bunch of things out that um, aren't good for you or, or even, you know, there are some things you cut out that also just can cause inflammation and we just, we feel great. So. So Amanda Panda says fries and vanilla shake. Our friend, uh, Natalie. Hi, Natalie, our fellow designer, coffee and chocolate. Mm, that sounds delicious. Uh, Lisa, another good one. Hummus and pretzels. Supposedly hmm. our local Publix, which is our version of a local grocery store, has amazing hummus that I need to try. I've been craving it ever since I found that out. Pizza and wings says Barb. Barb, I love that. That's good. Trisha loves a good French a fry good and milkshake. Our friend D loves Nutella and pretzels. Do you know that I've never really, in, um, I've never tried really Nutella. Isn't that weird? I haven't either, actually. Ham and mustard. Okay. Okay, ditto. Ditto says salmon and fried rice. That's very specific. That would great. That would be great. Um, oh, I like I like Heather's response. <laughs> um, fresh homemade bread, um, hot out of the oven, slathered in butter. Oh, yum! <laughs> Even though she's our moderator in the sky, I haven't said hi to you. Hi, Heather. Heather is moderating in the sky today for us as Leah and I are on. And I'm going to put that comment up because that is really a good one. That's awesome. That is a that is a good one right there. A lot of people are asking uh, when you say that you did Whole30, what does that mean? Um, Whole30 is a, um, I don't want to call it a diet because it's not a diet. It's just a uh, food program, I guess, where um, basically the only things you eat are proteins from meat vegetables, fruits, and healthy fats. So you cut out all sugar, all dairy, all legumes or legumes. I don't really know how you say that word. Um, corn, soy, you basically cut out all of the things that can possibly cause inflammation in your body and you kind of give yourself a reset. So when you think about the word, not to turn this into a health show, because of course you need to check with your doctor <laughs> and not us about uh, things when it comes to food and intake and how you handle your body. But um, inflammation is probably more um, pre prevalent in our bodies than we probably are giving it credit for. And you noticed a big difference. You can say an amen to that, I take it. I absolutely can. So I think that um, I think we actually get used to not feeling really great. And so when, when you cut that stuff out and you realize what feeling good actually does feel like, you realize that you probably do have some sensi sensitivities to things that you didn't realize. So, Yes. And if this was my channel and not a corporation channel, I would offer <clears throat> something else. But I'm not going to. But you can DM me for my opinion on food allergies. 
and uh, <laughs> food allergy tests. Um, because to give you a little bit of the insight, and by the way, right now I am just standing up my sentiment with some foam tape, which is the reason why I'm working and talking. Um, hey, what sentiment are you doing? I'm going to uh, stick with what comes in the pack, and that is the hello. Oh, that, uh, so we're using that. the same sentiment. It just looks a little different. Yeah. Perfect. All is right. That... I'm going to go ahead and um, I start assembling my card. Is that cool? Yes. If I move on. Okay, so I like to pop all of my um, panels up with full sheets of foam adhesive because, you know, Laura Basson, School of Life, Dimension let's, is Life. Let's say it, um, Dimension is Life. That's going to be <laughs> our new, like, big word on the show. Yeah. So I, I make these big panels of foam. It's just white craft foam that I use a five-inch piece of um, score tape on each side so that they um, will adhere really well. And it's just been like, I think the most cost effective for um, a way for me to make these big, huge panels of foam adhesive so that I don't get any weird like dips or indentations in my cards when I okay. put them together. We need to hear that again, because that is not oh. only an efficiency thing, that sounds like an economical thing. So let's say it one more time for the back row. Sure. And I will actually grab um, the products real quick. Okay. Um, this, is so, a great, this is a great tip because you can go yeah. th through the 3M pretty fast and all of our fellow crafters know that's not, it's not cheap. Yeah. You know, I have a big roll of 3M and I love my 3M foam tape, but it's expensive. And so I try not to use it for full panels like this. So what I do is I'll go to like my local craft store. So like a Michael's or a Joann's or just really wherever sells craft material. And um, they will have these big sheets of foam, like fun foam, like craft foam. And I just try to, I, I typically choose just white um, so that I don't have any colors peeking out from underneath my cards because I'm just really picky about that. <laughs> And I will trim them down. So I'll take some time when I buy a set and I'll trim them down to four or wait, no, I'll trim them down to three, three and three quarters by five so that they, they fit underneath a panel of uh, like a background panel. And just and to so let you then, know, I'm trying it live yes. as you describe it by grabbing the same foam. So I'm going to okay. try what you're saying as we speak. Yeah, and I can even, I think we have time. I can even do one here as well. So then I have um, this, I think this is five inch score tape. Let me verify, but I'm pretty sure it's five. Yes, it is five inch score tape. And you can get this at multiple places. Simon Says Stamp has it, I believe. Um, Amazon, you can get it directly from Score Pal or Score Tape. I think that's the name of the company. And I just will take a little bit of it out roll it out and then line up the foam directly onto it like that and then just trim at the edge and then you'll go ahead and you'll do that on the other side well other side as well pardon me and then you just have this great cost effective way to add an entire foam or adhesive foam panel to all of your backgrounds so you get that nice dimension and it um you won't get any weird indentations or dents where maybe foam tape didn't fully reach or extend to. So that's my little tip for, for cost-effective ways to create great dimension on your cards. I love that. That Leah, she always gives us a little bit of a, um, a save on several things. All right, so I um, am being quiet because I'm also assembling as we speak. And I do not have the scrapbook.com um, uh, roll that she has. So you're going to see me just glue directly to the foam to get the dimension. But it will And help you can with... absolutely do that too. I think Heather will grab one of these, one of the pieces of foam. And she has um, one of those big ATG guns okay. like the, that are like um, kind of like a really big tape runner type of adhesive yep. and I think that she uses those directly onto her foam as well and that works too there's lots of different ways you can do it um I just really like the I like the score tape for me um 
uh, one, because Heather is like super coordinated. I could never use one of those big ATG uh, tape guns that she has. I would get tape everywhere. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. So this is just a little more user friendly for me. So I am using the same philosophy, but I only have glue today. So, and that's and okay. Still, Lots of things work. I still got the dimension that I needed. And I think somebody asked me a question. Um, yes, this is score tape. And I think the brand is score pal maybe, but if you just search five inch score tape, you should be able to find it. Okay, I think the only thing I have left to do, Jeff, is add some bling. Oh, we're gonna do, let's do the bling? I was wondering, but I'm, yeah. I'm going with you. I think that's the only thing I'll show you in your camera feed really quick. So we've come along there. So we're, I'm mounted oh, on a card you're, base. Your card looks beautiful so far, Jeff. I love it. Okay. Okay. So which it, the, I'm sorry, did you just go to me using? or? One okay. more time. Anyway. Okay, I think I am going to use the dark pink and the light pink and this kind of pretty orangey color for the jewels. And which and so mix our... are you using, my friend? I'm sorry, what was that? Which of the mix? Which one of the two? Uh, the jewels mix. Okay, great. Yep. You could also use the crystals mix too. It, they, it also has some really great colors in it that would match this um, card perfectly. I just went with the jewels because they were sitting right here on my desk. Ooh, that's pretty. All right, let's see here. And I am just arranging them in little, in trios. It's typically what I always do. And inside of these jewels, they have, there's three different sized jewels. There's one that's a little larger, there's a medium sized one, and then a small one. And so when I arrange my little trios, I typically pick one of each size. I need to ask some of our Does anybody else? questions. Oh. Go ahead. What was that? I need to ask some of our final questions. I didn't realize we have, oh. we have filled this hour. My goodness. All right, let's get to our next yes, question. We have. <laughs> uh, question number four is next. Now for a terrible two. What two items that you just, you don't like together? Like everybody loves to talk about. Everybody talks about um, the uh, the banana, bananas and peanut butter. That is something that I just could not stomach. That does not sound appealing to me. Ugh, and, that sounds gross to me too, because I don't like, I don't like um, bananas. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, um, honestly, actually, this one probably will be a little strange, especially for our, our American watchers. I don't like peanut butter and jelly. Oh, okay. Got it. Interesting. Yeah, that's a staple around the States. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And uh, your Yeah, I think it's... Go ahead. Sorry, what was that? Uh, everybody is trying to ask uh, what um, Pat, M Matt, I work off of, and I just am working off of the Altenew, um on the black side. This is their self-healing mat. So how appropriate ah. that we're doing Altenew, um tonight. Today. That's it's funny. today. We don't do night yeah. shows anymore. Today. And I just, I work on the, right now I use the, um, the We Are Memory Keepers glass mat, their glass media mat. Kind of love that it offers um, you and I two different desktops for the audience to see, which is cool. I agree. Yeah. All right. I'm quiet, everyone, because I'm doing the old jewel. I know. I think we're both a little quiet because we're concentrating on getting our jewels placed in the right, <laughs> in the right area. All right. All right. I think I'm good with mine. Yep. I'm going to stop while I'm ahead, too. I'll hold mine up. Yep. So there you go, my friends. Look, look what Leah Lawson had us do today. Look at that. And the sparkle does kind of set it off nice, which is great. All well, right, this is let's a fun ask... card. I didn't really, I mean, I had a little bit of a vision in mind, but I didn't try it beforehand. And I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I am too. It's good. I love yours. It's beautiful. 
everyone's agreeing that the jewels made uh, the pop happen, which is good. All right, um, I'm gonna pull you off of your desktop. Will you uh, hold it, hold that card up one more time, nice and close to the oh. center of the camera? Yes, I sure will. There is that you good? Go. Um, up uh, toward your window a little bit more. There okay. you go, perfect. Look at that, everybody. That's fantastic. All right, we're gonna pull and mute Miss Leah for a second. I'm gonna ask the next question and then we'll send this little show off to YouTubeville. So Miss uh, Leah, you're off camera for just a second. Friends, I hope okay. that you're having fun with us here at the Craft Hour, new date, new time, season two premiere. Um, definitely seeing so many of you, which is fantastic. Brand new audience, good interactions, uh, which is great. Um, and I'll just share, Miss Leah, you're going to flip your camera, uh, your upside down and the upside down. Oh, I'm upside down. Around okay, me. thank you for letting me know that. No, no, uh, no. And you you all had to hear me say that because I had to help my friend <laughs> Leah out, which is great. Leah, that's looking good. <laughs> all right, let's go to our next question really quick, and then we'll get Leah back on the screen and we will close this show out. When was the last time you had second thoughts on buying something? Second thoughts on buying something. I'm actually not going to go first because I haven't thought of this question, but it's going to come to me in just a moment. But I will say, without a specific answer, I recently bought my first big boy car and uh, definitely have never spent a lot of money on a car. And I finally did. And then all of this happened and I was on furlough and I was thinking this is the universe telling me I should never have spent that level of money on something. But we're fine and we're good and I love my car. I've had it now for one year and it still makes me feel so excited. That's the one thing that you can't regret a purchase if it you know it makes you feel good even a year later. So I'm going to stay and say that one. Um, all right. So there's my card. But there's the lovely Miss Leah. Look at that. Leah, what, what about you? Did you have have you ever second thought a big purchase or anything? we um purchases what we want to purchase and so i don't really think i have actually we're we're frugal but what but and and we're good about um thinking out decisions first so i can't really think of anything yeah well first of all again for those of you who are just now tuning in about the furlough um mm -hmm. sometimes i forget we've talked about it for so long please don't feel sorry for me i am i'm eager to save the walt disney world company and we're back i'm back at work and everything's fine so please, no violins. We don't need that in the universe. Come see us at Walt Disney World. We're ready to host you. Um, so uh, those are our questions. Um, so tell me a little bit. Um, tell me a little bit about uh, anything you want to close out with. We've got to pick a random winner, right? We do. Yeah, Heather will um, pick a random winner to win a $15 gift card from today. So let's give her some time to do that. Got it. That's um, right. I, I think... I think something, oh, sorry, I cut you no, off. No, go ahead, please. Okay, I think something that I forgot to mention when we were talking about the challenges earlier um, is that there are always prizes attached to those challenges. So it's definitely worth it to um, create a project for them. One, because we love to connect with you that way. We love to see what you're creating with your pink fresh goodies. Um, but we also have prizes on all of those challenges. So ah. um, with the monthly challenge, there are two $50 gift cards that we award randomly. We, we pick a random winner and just as long as their entry um, meets the challenge criteria, they win a $50 gift card. We pick one for cards and one for scrapbook layouts. Um, and then our bi-weekly sketch challenges in our Facebook friends group, we pick a $25 gift card winner for each one of those. Those aren't those are those are pretty good value amounts, by the way. That's a, a reason yeah. to believe for sure. That's awesome. And did I see? Is there any um, items that you are looking to retire? I'm blanking for just a second on the splash screen. I felt like y'all were pushing uh, to remind us about something. Maybe I'm not. I don't think so. Okay, good. All nope. right. Well, everybody, look at you in your nice comments. I'm going to hand it over to Miss Heather and see if she, as our moderator in the sky, has picked. Someone she has indeed. I'll put it up on the screen. We're excited to say that Lorraine Randall, you won $15 gift card. All you have to do is email our friend Leah. You can all do that. You can send her adoration for this video as she got her redemption today. Uh, but Yay. Leah at pinkfreshstudio.com. <laughs> just allow one to two weeks to get back to you as we oh, process all I think she meant to say one to two days. I think oh. she accidentally just typed the word weeks. <laughs> Leah's like, um, I'm faster than that. I will get you. I'm faster email. than one to two weeks. <laughs>
Miss Leah, we did our first um, episode of season two. Yay! We did and it. I, I hear think you. I'm, uh, yeah. Well, we could hear we could hear you last time, which was good. I so, know. <laughs> um, are you? I'm excited about this new channel. I mean, not new channel. We're still in the same place. Um, but new time, new date. I'm off on yeah. Saturday, so I haven't been feeling rushed. I used to rush home. And for those of you who have driven in Florida traffic, that would scare me to death to try to get here on time. Uh, so it was nice to kind of wake up, have a cup of coffee, get ready for the show. This is good. I agree. I think it's going to be a great new day and time. Yeah. So everyone, if you'll forgive us, we've got to get off the line and call Germany and see if Miss Laura Bassin can join us in two weeks. Absolutely. Uh, that would be great. <laughs> Leah, I'll close out the show for you. Thanks as always for being a great leader to us and uh, all you do for Pink Fresh. And we'll see you on the next episode that you can join us. Sound good? All right. Thanks, good. guys. We'll see you after the show. Okay. Bye. All right, everybody. That was our friend, Leah Lawson. Uh, she's the proud marketing director for Pink Fresh Studio, and she helps all of that imagery as well as design. And she's got some new products, uh, her and Heather, named after her in the new release. So be sure to check those out. Thanks for giving us a second chance. Second chance uh, today was um, something worth a take two, and I appreciate it so much. Next uh, two weeks, we'll see you. There's a lot of two metaphors. In two weeks, we'll see you on another Saturday broadcast, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time here in the States. Uh, again, thanks for participating. Don't forget to connect with us. We love sh sharing our uh, story with you via social media. And uh, be sure to encourage people to watch the replay. We love engaging you on our YouTube channel as well. Thanks so much for all you do for Pink Fresh Studio. And on behalf of the company, thank you for joining us for today's Craft Hour with Pink Fresh. We'll see you again soon next time. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.